How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Mother Sponge 5000. I hope you guys are having a great day as of course today we're now going to talk about newly formed Hurricane Lee which right now has maximum sustained winds at around 75 miles per hour and it's rapidly intensifying at this point. Taking a look at the water vapor imagery we clearly see there's plenty of convection going on around the center of circulation and now we're beginning to see signs that this storm system is trying to develop an eye wall which definitely represents that this um, storm is rapidly intensifying as this continues ahead further northwestward and if we were to take a look at the outflow cl um, clouds as well they show that there's uh there um there's a lot of ventilation with this storm system which means that we're more likely going to see this intensify and there's not a lot of dry air um that's ahead of it or behind it so unfortunately we're likely going to see a major hurricane out of this based on all the signs we're seeing with this storm Pretty much all of the most reliable computer models are agreeing that we're going to see the storm rapidly intensify. Taking a look at the European model, we see that the pressure will continuously drop as this approaches just to the north of the Caribbean. Where we see by the Saturday time frame, the pressure will drop down to 978 millibars, which is equivalent to potentially a Category 3 hurricane. There isn't a lot of dry air, so expect this to rapidly intensify. And we're going to see the pressure drop even lower, um, possibly bombing out. Out right around 941 millibars so it's likely will become a category 4 potentially a category 5 hurricane all the factors are really going for this storm there's a nice outflow um, with this storm to some to look at the wind shear um, forecast map from the European model we see that there's a strong upper level high located just above the center of circulation which shows that this storm is going to be very well ventilated to allow the pressure to drop along the surface so when it comes to intensification there's high certainty that we're going to see a category four just the north of the caribbean but the good news is that it will at least stay clear for the most part of the caribbean islands when it comes to any direct impacts if we were to take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly it seems like the ridging won't be strong enough to force this storm system further southward which is certainly good news we definitely in puerto rico and lesser antilles don't want to see a category four hurricane right at your guys's doorstep um or even for the islands further westward such as dominican republic haiti jamaica cuba it's definitely good news that this storm will likely stay just to north of you guys but be aware of the high risk of rip currents as well as rough surf but moving forward beyond the caribbean which is probably your guys's biggest question in this video is will this impact the united states and unfortunately we haven't really ha um, had any more of uh, accurate or at least certain forecast compared to yesterday because it's still nine to ten days out before it would potentially impact the united states if it were to take that route and taking a look at the latest update from the european model however it's definitely more concerning today than it was yesterday because um moving forward with the european model the european model now expects this trough to be a lot weaker and to move away from the northeast a lot more quickly and the ridge to just dominate much of the northern um the northern por portion of the atlantic and that certainly wouldn't be good news because um this is the furthest the european model forecast goes out 240 hours out so this is around 10 days from now and if we were to take a look at the steering flows at this point it's very very concerning um because we have a very strong ridge just the north of it there isn't a trough that would be able to pick it up and steer it out to sea it's just a straight large ridge just the north of it and we have a small upper level low that would be located in the southeast and you're probably hoping that maybe this upper level low could contribute to this storm potentially moving out to sea however unfortunately the opposite would be the case in a scenario like this because it, because with a low pressure system, the winds move from a counterclockwise direction. So that means on the northwestern side or the northeastern side of this low pressure system, the winds would primarily be coming from the east, which would encourage this um, hurricane lead to move towards the east along with this pressure gradient with this ridge. And of course, with a ridge, the winds move um, surrounding a ridge. Um, the winds move from a clockwise direction. So all the... Um, surface level wind direction would primarily come from the southeast which would 
promote, um, which would encourage the storm to take a left hook towards the northeast and we sort of see it um early on with the european model where this storm gets closer slightly closer and closer to the east coast taking on um north uh west northwesterly direction towards the northeast and this is very concerning at this point we're gonna need to wait and see if the european model holds up this forecast it's definitely subject to change we could definitely see major updates with both of the computer models so take this with a huge grain of salt but this is at least something to keep tabs on all throughout the east coast because if this were to take a left hook that could potentially bring catastrophic impacts because look at the pressure of this storm system hovering around 967 millibars equivalent to a category 3 hurricane and the last time a major hurricane impacted the northeast was back in 1954 with hurricane carol so it's been nearly 70 years since we last saw a major hurricane impact the northeast and could this potentially become our our first one in 70 years we're gonna have to wait and see still far from uncertain this could still easily move out to sea i'll keep guys updated regarding any changes with the forecast the good news is however the gfs model is showing a different scenario the gfs model is expecting the trough to be a lot stronger to move a lot more slowly to be able to pick up this storm and steer it clear of uh, of the united states at least when it comes to getting any direct impacts let me show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly we do see a gfs model expects this trough to be stronger and then picks up the storm and then just pretty much steers it out to sea this would be certainly the best case scenario we don't want this ridge becoming too strong to steer it towards the west we want this trough to be a little bit stronger to steer it towards the east but again still highly uncertain that will happen um i wouldn't say we'll get a better idea of how strong this trough will be until possibly by this weekend right around the sunday time frame once this trough actually enters the eastern half of the united states then we'll get a better idea of whether or not this will impact the northeast or not but i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days so a lot to iron out with the forecast but in terms of the intensity of this storm as it continues to head further northward the gfs model is expecting anywhere between the category 4 category 5 just the north of the caribbean the caribbean expect high surf and whether and also i need to point out whether this impacts the northeast coast or not directly you it is likely you're going to experience life-threatening rip currents as well as rough surf all along the coast so you definitely need to pay very close attention to this because of course you don't want to go in the water when there's a high rip current risk and it's likely as this moves up the western um the western portion of the atlantic along with this our next potential hurricane that could develop in the middle of the atlantic this one of course has much a uh, much lower chance of impacting land at all since it's well into the open atlantic and typically storms this far up north um this far to the east have a um pretty much almost never are able to make it all the way west to impact the united states but it will at least contribute to the high rip current risk for much of the united states as well as eastern canada and by the way for Eastern Canada, I will say the chance you will experience impacts from this um, hurricane are definitely a lot higher uh, be, than, let's say, for New England because, of course, Eastern Canada pops out into the Atlantic a lot more. So it's going to be more difficult to be able to avoid this storm, even if the westerly winds were quite strong. So Eastern Canada, you need to be even more aware of this because I will say that it's even more likely you will at least experience some sort of impacts from this tropical cyclone. When taking a look at the latest ensemble members, they are a bit more concerning compared to yesterday because we have seen a slight shift to the west from a lot of the ensemble members, especially with the GFS ensemble members, where now we have a decent amount of ensemble members taking a landfall somewhere in between Canada and the southern coast of Maine and even affecting um, the Cape Cod area um of massachusetts and for the european model we see that it does um, much of the ensemble members don't go that far out to 
at least forecast any um, anything beyond um, New England, but we do have some ensemble members wanting to take this close to the United States and bring a landfall um, towards southern Canada. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how the ensemble members shift their forecasts over the next several days. The model intensity guidance is showing that this likely will become a category four hurricane, potentially a category five. I would, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we do see a category five because we also have to be aware that the model intensity guidance tends to underestimate the intensity of most tropical cyclones. So we easily could see a category five. Um, the good news is, of course, it won't impact the Caribbean. Um, so, but we're gonna need to see if, in the long-term future, it could impact the United States. So this is what the National Hurricane Center is forecasting over the next five days when it comes to Hurricane Lee. Of course, the National Hurricane Center is expecting this storm to reach major hurricane status. And the good news is that the National Hurricane Center is leaving the Caribbean islands out of the cone of uncertainty. And then beyond the five day mark, of course, it becomes a lot more uncertain beyond that um, time. Um, beyond that, we're going to need to see when the National Hurricane Center wants to make its turn for northward because potentially the Bahamas could maybe receive some impacts if this were to move um, just west enough before taking a track for northward. So definitely keep tabs on the projected path over the next several days because the turn up northward could also play a key role in terms of of whether or not this will impact the United States or potentially Bermuda in the more long term future. Like I said earlier, whether or not this storm system impacts the United States or not directly, at the very least, you need to expect a high rip current risk as well as rough surf. Beach erosion is certainly likely as the storm continues ahead further northward because it's going to be a very powerful storm near major or at least well above major hurricane status um, as it moves up the east coast. So you definitely need to be aware of that and make sure to stay off, um, stay out of the ocean as the storm continues ahead for northward because the rip current risk could be life threatening at times. So in terms of my forecast in general, not much differences compared to what the computer models were stating yesterday. It's going to take several days to really get more certainty with the forecast. I wish I could give you guys the answers right now, but it's just a bit too far out into the future to get any sort of details narrowed down um, to really accurately forecast what's going to happen once the storm system takes a track for northward. Well, I could say at the very least is that the southeast would avoid impacts. It seems like there's going to be just enough ridging that's going to help steer or at least just enough of weakness in ridging to steer the storm further northward and there should be just enough of a strong easterly flow to steer this further northward before reaching the southeast. But the big question remains. Could this impact the Mid-Atlantic? Could this impact the Northeast or Southern Canada? That still has yet to be seen. So definitely stay tuned for more updates. Um, I'll keep. Um, I'll definitely keep you guys updated over the next several days. Make sure to subscribe um, for more weather-related content. If you're new to this channel, I'll make sure to update you guys every single day. And make sure to like if you like this video. Um, it really helps the channel out. And I thank you guys for watching. And I hope you guys all have a great day.